friends, uh, I welcome you all in this uh, week 11 of this NPTEL online course on subject soil and water conservation engineering. Okay. So, my name is Amay Pathak and in this uh, module, uh, we will be understanding uh, the uh, we will be understanding and studying the wind erosion and what are the different measures to control wind erosion. Okay. So, let us start this uh, uh, class. Okay. So, in this module of week 11, so as I said we will be studying uh, wind erosion and different measures to control uh, the wind erosion. So, this module is divided into 5 lectures. So, we will be covering 5 lectures. So, first lecture that is today's lecture. Uh, it will be on wind erosion and its control basics. Similarly, on the second lecture will be on designing of wind break, then designing of shelter belts. Lecture 4 will be on formation of sand dunes and lecture 5 will be on stabilization of sand dunes. Okay. So, let us see. Okay. So, before going further, before understanding wind erosion, we need to understand what is wind. Okay. So, wind is nothing but it is an air mass. Okay. So, which is no, wind is nothing but it is an air which has some mass and which has some vol velocity. Okay. So, because since this air has some mass and velocity, it acquires some kind of energy okay. and this energy moves the soil during the process of wind erosion. Okay. So, you can see this erosiveness of wind or we can say erosive wind energy, it increases by a factor equal to velocity cube. Okay. Okay. So, it means a small increase in wind velocity can result into larger increase, increase in wind erosive energy. Okay. So, it is a it is a this erosiveness of wind is uh, increases by a factor equal to velocity cube. Okay. Okay. So, now let us see what is wind erosion. Okay. So, wind erosion it is a process uh, 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 red lines are there. Just cut the white in okay. white. Okay. 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 Cut, continue. continue. Okay. So, uh, uh, the definition of wind erosion. So, it is a process of detachment, transportation and deposition of soil material by the wind. So, it is a combination of three steps. First, the detachment of loose or fine uh, grain soil particle from the surface, then the transportation of the uh, soil particles from one place to another place uh, and the deposition uh, to a place which is far away uh, from the uh, place where the uh, process of detachment has started. Okay. So, so, in that sense, wind erosion is actually is very dangerous and you can say compared to, to water erosion also it is similar. So, wind erosion is no way less dangerous than the water erosion. So, what happens when the high velocity wind when it strikes over the bare lands uh, with increasing force. So, what, what happens then? So, with so the wind with very high velocity when it strike over the bare land. So, let us say when there is no vegetation cover or the soil surface is compared completely smooth and barren, then in that case uh, the finer particles or fine loose or you can say light soil particles that are actually rich in nutrients or uh, which make the soil more fertile, they are actually being lifted by this wind and they are being transported to miles and miles away. So, in that sense, so wind erosion actually is responsible for uh, causing great damage to crop productivity because the most fertile layer is getting transported or is being uh, er eroded by the wind. Okay. So, in that sense the wind erosion is very dangerous. Okay. So, if you see the uh, there, there are different factors that affect the wind erosions, so we can group these factors into uh, different categories. Okay. So, loosely if we can say there are two things. First, the factors that influence the climate over that regions and factors that affect that uh, affects the uh, soil surface or that that define the soil uh, or the surface parameters okay so we can say the climatic uh, variables so most of the time we know what are the, what are the climate variables 
So, like wind over a region, then uh, wind over a region, then precipitation, uh, precipitation and temperature. So, all this together, all this climate variable, they actually uh, define the atmospheric conditions that make uh, soil more prone to or more vulnerable to the erosion. Then coming to the soil properties. So, soil properties such as the texture of the soil, composition of the soil, aggregation and the moisture contents. So, how, how much dry the soil is there and what is the texture, uh, well it is well graded soil or poorly graded soil that, that are all soil properties that defines the that uh, uh, that makes soil more vulnerable to the erosion. Then comes to the land surface characteristics. Okay. For example, the topography of a region whether it is smooth or undulating hilly regions, then moisture present there, aerodynamic roughness length, vegetation cover or any of the or presence of any non erodible element that can reduce the effect of uh, wind, wind erosion. Okay. And then finally, how we use the land that is the land use practice. Uh, example farming, grazing and mining. So, these are the different primary factors that, uh, that controls or that affect the wind erosion. So, in a broader term we can say the wind erosion is, uh, is expected when the soil is uh, very loose, uh, when it is finely divided, uh, when it is relatively dry and the surface conditions are smooth and bare and wind is on the top of that wind is strong enough to start the wind erosion. So, all these factors are actually contributes to the wind erosion. Okay. So, uh, wind erosion it is a it is commonly observed in mostly uh, in a climate like arid climate arid regions and semi arid regions where the precipitation is very inadequate which makes soil uh, very dry. Uh, for example, in case of uh, Indian subcontinent we can see the Thar desert. Uh, in, in India, Rajasthan and some part of Gujarat and, and Haryana. And globally if you can see there are some regions like Middle East regions and over some uh, part of some Northern Africa, Sahara desert. So, all these regions, uh, all the all these regions the winds erosion, wind erosion is more prominent. So, one of the most serious damage that is caused by this wind erosion is the change in soil texture. Okay. So, what happens the, the smaller particles uh, of soil are more subjected to movement by wind. So, what happens the silt, clay and organic matters are being transported or are being removed from the surface and they are transported to some other places. Okay. So, what is left there is actually uh, very coarse and lesser productive material behind. Okay. So, in that sense the wind erosion uh, is actually up is uh, makes soil more sandier. Okay. So, most of the fertile, uh, fertile layer is being removed by this wind erosion. So, so that is why this wind erosion is dangerous is and we, we need to control it. Okay. Okay. So, this is a, a very good example uh, of wind erosion we can see here. So, in the first image it is a both of both of these are like satellite image and the first image we can see the the extent of this phenomena. Okay. So, you can see uh, this is actually somewhere over the North Atlantic, North Atlantic region and this is like uh, uh, Northern Africa. So, that uh, this is the image of dust storm. So, you can see here so, dust is being transported from the Sahara, from the Sahara desert to this over the North Atlantic uh, oceans. So, you can see the uh, distance it covers actually. So, once this soil gets soil uh, layer get lost, it is very difficult to uh, make favorable condition over that regions. Okay. So, see the distance uh, the uh, extent of this phenomena. Okay. In the second image you can see this is also for Sahara desert and you can see the dust storm over the Sahara desert and you can see the magnitude. Okay. So, all this magnitude actually how, how much quantity is being transported and being disturbed from the from its original location. So, this is actually very uh, extreme case of wind erosion okay, which is observed in the satellite image. Okay. So, now let us see the mechanics of the movement of 
uh, wind erosion. Okay. So, wind erosion as a process, it can be divided into three distinct phases. Uh, we can call it as initiation of movement or detachment of soil particle from where the uh, wind erosion actually starts, then the transportation and finally, deposition over a distance uh, far away from the original location of the soil particle. So, now, now, now let us see this movement one by one. Okay. So, in the mechanics of movement, let us see how the initiation of movement takes place. Okay. So, what happens this movement of soil particle is actually is caused by wind forces exerted against or parallel to the ground, for, ground surface. So, what happens when the wind with very high velocity when it strikes over the surface uh, soil surface. So, most of this uh, 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 velocity force is absorbed by the upper layer of soil particle. So, in the, in the, in the absence of any uh, any protective layer. So, most of this force is bared by the soil particle. Okay. So, if the soil is in that case, okay. so in that case, if the soil particles, uh, if they are happen to be very loose and lighter or finer, then wind may lift them from the surface uh, in the initiation process. So, the process of initial detachment starts here. So, first it targets the finer particles, fine or medium size particle. Okay. 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 So, this uh, motion actually the initiation of this movement starts when the wind acquires some kind of velocity. Okay. So, if the velocity crosses that threshold limit, then uh, wind has that potential to cause erosion. Okay. So, that velocity is called as the threshold velocity. So, threshold velocity is the minimum velocity. So, threshold velocity is the minimum velocity which is needed to initiate the movement of soil particles or which is required to detach uh, the finer uh, or medium size uh, soil particle from the surface. Okay. So, uh, but it depends on the uh, characteristics of the uh, ground and the soil conditions. So, this threshold velocity is not a constant, but it changes with the surface condition. Okay. So, for example, for most erodible soil, uh, which is of size about 0.1 uh, mm, the threshold velocity is in the range of uh, like 15 to 16 kilometer per hour at the height of 30 centimeter. Okay. So, when a soil surface that is rough or protected with non-erodible material, in that case it will require a very stronger wind to initiate the particle movement than compared to the smoother surface. Okay. So, soil surface that is very rough and protected with some, uh, some kind of uh, non-erodible material uh, for them the, uh, the threshold velocity will be very high. So, so, so to initiate that mo moment very high threshold velocity is required. Okay. Now, next is the transportation. So, once the detachment or initiation start uh, of the process of wind erosion, so the soil particle will being uh, will be transported from one place to another place. So, the quantity of soil moved by the wind is actually influenced by the, uh, the particle size, the characteristics of the uh, soil particle that is particle size, gradation of the particles, wind velocity, whether winds are very strong uh, and the distance along the eroding area. So, all these parameters that defines the quantity of soil which is being moved by the wind. So, uh, the quantity of soil uh, since the wind is variable in velocity and direction, often it produces eddies and that makes uh, that makes soil get uh, uh, that, that is responsible. Uh, in uh, detachment of soil from the surface and transportation. Okay. So, the quantity of soil moved is actually again we can see is a uh, is dependent on two conditions uh, or two variables. One is related to the climate uh, that is a wind and another is the particle uh, that is a soil, uh, soil surface. Okay. So, the quantity of soil moved is directly proportional to the difference between uh, actual velocity is represented by V minus theoretical velocity cube actually cube of that. So, quantity of soil mode is actually directly proportional to the quantity of soil mode is directly proportional to the 
cube of difference between these two velocity actual velocity minus theoretical velocity and it is also directly proportional to the square root of particle diameter. Okay. So, okay, so, once the initiation starts and for soil particles are being transported, they will deposit over a distance which is uh, some distance away from the, uh, from the originating uh, place. So, depositions occur, deposition occurs when the gravitational force is greater than the force holding the particle in the air. Okay. So, uh, what happens when the foil particle which is in air, air stream, when the gravitational force acting on that is actually greater than the force holding the particle in the air stream, then the process of deposition starts. So, this generally happens when there is a decrease in wind either by itself or by uh, which is or caused by any barrier, maybe it uh, kind of solid barrier, vegetative barrier or any uh, barriers like ditches and benches. Okay. In addition to that, this raindrops, they may also take the dust out of air. Okay. So, this is a deposition step. Okay. Now, uh, now we have seen the movement of the soil. So, uh, let us see how the, uh, now we have seen the mo uh, mechanics of movement. Now, let us see the soil particle movement here. So, it depends on the particle size. So, after the movement of uh, wind, uh, after the movement is initiated or soil particle is detached, the soil particles are carried by the winds in three types of movement depending on their size, depending on their size in relation to the velocity and turbulence of the wind. Okay. So, these three uh, movements are like saltation, suspension and surface creep. So, the wind erosion is a combination of these three kinds of movement. Okay. So, this is a very good figure which talks about the uh, particle movement, soil particle movement. So, you can see here at initially when there is a fine or medium grain soil particle and wind is blowing in this direction and when the wind velocity it is it crosses the threshold velocity. So, the process of saltation starts. So, what happens during this process? The soil particles make some kind of abrupt jumps or some kind of bounces over the surface. Okay, and this process and so that it got it gets lifted or sometimes it gets rolled over the surface. So, this process is called as a saltation. So, saltation is a process during which the soil particle is being uh, is being uh, is being uh, jumped or like it bounces from its position. Okay. So, what happens because of this motion, okay, so because of this motion, this particle when it collides with the surface or with, with some other uh, others other grains it disintegrate into smaller particles okay and this smaller particles in the presence of wind this smaller particles in the presence of wind they get uh, they they get carried away or they get lifted from the surface uh, and this process is called as a suspension okay and of and meanwhile during the uh, process of saltation itself uh, the larger soil particle this when this when this finer uh, particle when it hits ground or it when it collides to the bigger uh, size particle. Okay. So, this bigger size particle it cannot be lifted because of its mass, but the, the energy is actually being transported uh, or, or energy wind energy is being used to make a movement along the direction uh, of the wind. So, over the surface it start rolling. So, this is uh, so and this movement is called as the surface creep. Okay. So, now let us have a look uh, at this three uh, types of movement one by one. So, in the process of saltation, the saltation occurs uh, when the soil particles of size of 0.1 to 0.5 mm move in a series of bounces or and jumps. And jumps. So, soil particle it makes some initial bounces and jumps. Uh, so, that process is called as saltation, that movement is called as uh, saltation and it is dependent on pressure of the wind on the soil particles and the, the collision of particle with other particles. So, these two process defines the saltation moment okay and the height of this jump height of this jump varies with the size and density of soil particle roughness of the soil surface and the velocity of the wind so uh, and it, it, and it is important to note that that depending on the soil type 
around 50 to 75 percent of the total weight of soil are carried in the in the process of saltation. Okay. So, here this in this figure it is shown that suppose the L is the length of the uh, tra transport. Uh, so, the soil particle is getting detached here and it is being lifted. So, to up to the length uh, 150 to 14 it is in rising motion and then this process of deposition starts. Now, now the suspension. Uh, we have seen the saltation uh, movement. Now let's see the suspension. So suspension occurs when the particles lesser than size of 0.1 mm size are lifted far above the surface and carried to a greater distance uh, under the influence of wind velocity. So sometimes the uh, distance of their uh, distance. Uh, by which they get transported is sometimes across the continents or oceans. Okay. So, movement of this fine particles is, is usually initiated in the process of saltation when the particles bounce back off over the surface and it get disintegrated into finer particles or it lifts the finer particle, the wind will lift the finer particle uh, and, uh, may, and the process of suspension or suspension movement starts. So, around 3 to 40 percent of the soil weights are carried by this suspension. Now, an, there is another movement which is applicable to the larger uh, size particle, uh, particle of size 0 0.5 to 2 mm. So, since these particles cannot be moved by the wind, they cannot be lifted by the wind, but they can be, uh, they, they can be rolled uh, along the surface. So, the it is a rolling or uh, this surface creep is a rolling or sliding of large soil particle along the soil surface and the particles moved mainly by the impact of particles in the saltation. So, the uh, particles which are already in the movement of uh, in the in the form of saltation they start this uh, the, this movement of uh, on a bigger uh, on a bigger or like um, uh, the on a particle which are generally of of more mass. Okay. So, this movement is called as a surface creep. So, it is a rolling motion along the surface. Okay. So, around 5 to 25 percent of the total soil weights are carried away in this fashion and it is a localized erosion because, because of the mass of the particles. Okay. Now, let us see the different ways to control the erosion. So, we can control the erosion uh, by two steps, the parameter which are responsible for wind erosion. Uh, if we uh, adopt some kind of preventive measures, we can reduce uh, the effect of erosion by uh, adjusting uh, by up, by up adopting this wind uh, erosion control measures. Okay, so we can either reduce the surface wind velocity, or means that means we can reduce the uh, erosiveness of wind, or we can make soil surface more resistant to the force wind forces. Okay, so that can be achieved by conserva conservation of moisture and proper tillage operation. So let's see first first step to reduce the surface wind velocity. So, if you have to reduce the uh, surface wind velocity, so there are different ways or different measures that can be used such as vegetative measures, uh, terrace practices and mechanical methods. So, let us see uh, these measures one by one. Okay. So, first is the vegetative measures. So, it is a most, uh, most effective means of wind erosion control measures. So, if you are using uh, intertill crops, close growing crops, shrubs and trees, so they can, uh, they can reduce the erosive, uh, the, they can reduce the effect of uh, wind, they can uh, reduce the wind velocity. So, the effect of wind erosion uh, may get reduced. So, in general the close growing crops such as cereals, cereal legumes, grasses, etc., are more effective than the intertill crops because this close growing crops actually they will help the uh, soil particles together and also uh, they will protect the upper layer of soil. Another measure is to, uh, to plant crop in such a way that the prevailing wind direction is perpendicular to that. So, for more effective operations crop should be grown perpendicular to the direction of wind and other practices like strip cropping, uh, field on field and contour and uh, stubble mulching. Uh, should be adopted to control the wind erosion. Okay. Next is by proper tillage operation. So, the our aim of tillage operation should be such that 
it should make uh, it should make a rough cloudy surface with some plant residues exposed on the surface. So the uh, so the effect of uh, high velocity wind can be uh, can be minimized. Okay. So generally lands are cultivated soon after rains to get maximum roughness. Okay. So sometimes if have to uh, if there is a chances of uh, erosion wind erosion. So sometimes as a emergency measures uh, we use ripping as a uh, ripping as an emergency measure to reduce the wind erosion in clay soils. Okay. So this is this was the tillage operation. Now. Okay. Now, there are some measures like mechanical measures okay. so that can be used. So, mechanical measures means uh, we, it can, we can plant some series of trees and shrubs uh, on, the, on the border of the field so that the effect of uh, high wind speed can be reduced. So, they include mechanical barriers like wind breaks and shelter breaks. So, wind break by definition uh, is any kind of barrier, okay. so any kind of barrier uh, for protection of wind generally uh, from for protection of winds and it is generally used for farmstead gardens uh, gardens and orchards etc and similarly a shelter belt is a longer barrier than the wind break and it consists of combination of various shrubs and trees so this wind breaks and shelter break they reduce the wind velocity near the ground by exerting a drag on wind and by deflecting the wind stream so this is an example you can see the wind break so, uh, it's a uh, wind breaks. Uh, this is a wind break, and this is a shelter bed. Okay. So, we'll be looking this thing uh, in in a detail in the subsequent lectures. So, now uh, this is just for introduction. I'm uh, giving some information here. Okay. So, this is uh, so this is an example of wind erosion here. So, we, you can see here. So, in an open wind or open air stream, suppose the wind velocity is around 35 miles per hour, and by planting this wind break. We can reduce the wind velocity over this location around 10, mi 10, miles per, 10 miles per hour. So, there is a significant reduction in wind speed on the windward side, uh, sorry, on the leeward side of the wind break. Similarly, its distance uh, uh, it can protect us to, to some particular distance. Okay. So, let us see here also the effect is visible. So, around uh, wind speed is around 15 miles per hour here. Okay. So, So, the distance of full protection is uh, can be calculated by this equation which is given by d is equal to 17 times height of the barrier multiplied by ratio of two velocities. Uh, the, these velocities are like uh, first is the v m that is the threshold velocity, the maximum velocity at 15 meter height which is required to initiate the movement uh, and for smooth and, smooth and bare soil this uh, threshold or maximum velocity is 9.6 meter per second and this v is actually the uh, actual velocity at 15 meter height and this theta is angle of deviation of prevailing wind direction perpendicular to the wind break. Okay. So, now let us see the example, so we can, we can have a, a better understanding by the example here. Okay. So, this is the example, so in this example we have to determine the spacing between wind breaks that are 15 meter height if 5 year return periods of wind velocity at 15 meter height is 15.6 meter and the wind direction deviates 10 degree from the perpendicular to the field strip. So, uh, in the problem we have to assume a smooth bare sur surface and fully protected soil field. So, what is given here? So, given here is like uh, we have to uh, we have to plan for a wind break of height 15 meter. Uh, the actual velocity given here is 15.6 meter, the angle of deviation uh, from the perpendicular from a direction perpendicular to the uh, wind break is 10 degree and the theoretical velocity for a smooth and bare surface is 9.6 meter. So, if, if you substitute all this value here, so height is 15 meter, V m is 9.6, V is uh, 15.6 uh, uh, and theta is 10 degrees uh, 10 degree. So, we get d is equal to 154.54 meter. So, what it means? So, so, if we plant us a one row of wind break, so we will get a protection of this 154.54 meter, uh, we can get protection from this wind break. So, the another, uh, another wind break layer of wind break should be planted uh, at the spacing 154.54 mm uh, at a distance uh, away from this first wind break. Okay. So, now, now let us look at the another problem here. 
So, here we have to determine the full protection strip width for a uh, fill strip topping. If the crop in the adjacent fill strip is wheat of 0.9 meter tall and wind velocity is, uh, wind velocity is 8.9 meter per second and winds are prevailing winds are uh, actually perpendicular to the fill strip. So, uh, the height of wheat crop is given as 0.9 meter, the actual wind speed at uh, 15 meter is 8.9 meter uh, per second and since the prevailing wind is perpendicular to the direction um, to the uh, to the fill strip, so the angle of deviation is 0 here. So, we need to find out the spacing width. Okay. So, so one, one strip how much uh, uh, by planting one strip how much uh, distance will get protection that first we have to find out find it out. So, uh, by putting all the values here in this equation h is equal uh, sorry this is d, uh, d is equal to 17 h vm by v cos theta. So, if we substitute all this value here we will get strip width of 15.3 meters. So, it means so one row of this fill strip is protecting 15.3 meter. So, spacing should be 15.3 meter. Okay. So, now we have seen uh, how to reduce wind, now let us see how to control uh, controlling the soil, uh, controlling the soil wind erosion by, uh, by controlling the soil factors. Okay. So, uh, there are two ways, uh, so there are different ways, first is by conserving the soil moisture. So, uh, by conserving soil moisture means uh, it is helpful for to minimize the, the by conserving soil moisture we have two benefits. First, so effect of uh, wind erosion can be minimized and second uh, it can help us uh, it is imp uh, so this uh, this measure conserving of soil moisture is actually helpful for uh, wind erosion control as well as well as the crop production. So, the moisture uh, can be conserved in three ways by increasing infiltration, by reducing evaporation and preventing unnecessary plant growth. So, this uh, this can be achieved by complete this can be achieved uh, by level terracing, uh, contouring, mulching and selecting suitable crops. Okay. So, these are the measure to conserve, uh, measures to conserve the soil moisture. Okay. Another measure is to, uh, to uh, is the conditioning of top soil. So, adopting a practices that makes upper layer more non erosion non erosive so uh, adopting a practices that produce non erosion aggregates of size greater than 1 mm diameter or which make larger cord that should be our goal so that is another measure so finally to summarize this uh, to summarize this wind erosion control me uh, methods so uh, these are the uh, these are the few um, things you can do actually so, first uh, by keeping the soil covered with vegetation and crop residue maximum time possible. Uh, so, sometimes in case of uh, if the there is unproductive or uh, unproductive cultivated soil, so you can think of adopting permanent measures to control wind erosion, then tilling the soil after the rains until vegetation cover is ready to provide the protection and directly uh, avoid directly working on the dry soils and maintain by maintaining a rough surface cover. And finally, so, in case, in case of any emergency, adopt emergency measures if required. So, this is a way, uh, so in this lecture we have seen uh, definition of wind erosion, uh, different movements of soil particles uh, under the wind erosion, what are the ways to control the wind erosion uh, by reducing the wind speed or by controlling the surface characteristics. So, with that uh, I will stop here, so we will see the designing part of this wind control uh, measures in the next slide. Uh, in, in, the in the next lecture about uh, wind breaks and shelter wells. Okay. Thank you.